All right, Steve. Whenever you're ready, go ahead. All right, Mr. Njikwani, this is Steve Juin from MMA Mania. How are you doing tonight? How you doing, I'm doing really good, and I'm glad to talk to you about this big fight you've got coming up, which originally was scheduled to be with Melvin Manouf, but you've had a change of opponent to John Salter. So how are you feeling about this late change in the fight? Uh, <laughs> it's cool. I mean, it's not really a problem. I, I was I was looking forward to fighting Melvin more of uh, his name, you know, and who he is and, <laughs> and what he's accomplished. I thought it would be pretty dope to be able to be the person like him. He's a legend, so yeah. yeah. Other than that, I'm cool with him. Yeah, yeah. You can't turn down a fight with no mercy, so it's unfortunate that he had to withdraw. But how do you think John Salter yeah. compares to him? And, you know, you said it's not a big deal that they changed opponents, but obviously you might train a little differently for each guy. Yeah. Uh, stylistically, it's just like night and day. <laughs> uh, but, uh, Salter is good in his own way, though. He's a, he's a legit jiu-jitsu guy and wrestler. So, uh, so it's, it's, it's gonna be a different fight for me, but, um, but, uh, it's pretty, I mean, I guess, I guess the game plan doesn't really change much. Like, I'm always gonna go out there and do, do what I do. Yeah, man. Yeah, Sal Salter is, Salter is gonna be tough in his own way, you know, I'm looking forward to it been a little while since we've seen you in the Bellator cage leading up to this fight with him. Last time, I believe, was Bellator 189 last year. It's almost a year's time. So, have injuries kept you out? Uh, no. Nah. I mean, after after my last fight in December, I, I had to get cleared by the doctor. My foot just looked bad. But I was cleared and ready to go in, like, January, February. Like, yes, early January. So, uh, I mean, early February, so I was I was ready to go. I was just waiting for Bellator to give me the word. Well, obviously, they put you in the prominent spotlight again because you were in the main event last time. You're in the main event now. So, you've got to feel like put together a few wins, middleweight title shots coming to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's, it's being talked about. But, uh, yeah, I'm just handling handle Salter first and we'll get from there. And Salter would be a good way to prove that because he was a guy who was considered for that as well. He had seven wins in a row until he faced the undefeated Rafael Lovato. Yeah, that's what I figured too. And um, uh, and uh, and even back back up before this fight was even announced, I figured I figured me and him will fight eventually anyway. So uh, he was going for that top spot. And so was I. So, yeah, I mean, kind of seen this one coming. <laughs> That's why it's not really much of a big deal to me. I see then. So the plan is basically Salter and then Lovato and then a world title shot. Basically knock them all down one at a time. <laughs> I'm going to knock down whoever goes to the front of you. That's my game plan. Absolutely, and that's what you're known for. You've got some of the flashiest, most exciting striking in this division. So what have you worked on? Since the last fight, now that you've been healthy for almost a whole year and just waiting to go, uh, I mean, not, nothing, nothing specific. I was just, uh, just trying to stay in the gym a little more often. I was, uh, instead of taking a bunch of time off after, after a fight, I, I just, I just tried to stay active. I didn't, I didn't really go in there trying to figure it. I mean, figure out a way to get better at anything. I just, I just, I just thought uh, I'd just stay in the gym, stay ready. If fight comes up, it comes up. If well, not, I'll be ready. Do you find it's easier now that you're fighting at middleweight? I know that previously when you were making cuts, it could be a little bit of a strain on your body at times. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, that shit fucked me up, man. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't deal with that at all. Like it would, uh, I feel like it would cripple me. Like it, it was a fight before a fight. And sometimes I didn't, well, a lot of times I didn't make weight, so I was like, losing the fight before I even fucking went out there. So I, I didn't, I didn't like that, man. The, the cover was just too much for me. I'm a little older now, so like the weight doesn't come off as easy. But, uh, I'm, I'm glad to be at 85 now. I feel a lot happier. <laughs> happier and, uh, I can focus more on training and fighting and training to get better instead of just training to lose weight, you know? 
Right. And like you said, then you're only having one fight instead of two. It's got to worry you when you see what happens to people like Cynthia Cavillo when she had to be carried to the scale and carried off the scale. Those kind of weight cuts aren't going to result in good things long term. For exactly. And and every time I see videos like that, I feel like, man, like that was me. <laughs> like I was damn near I was I was I like I could have easily been carried on that scale, but uh I mean you can't look weak in front of everybody in front of your opponents and all that, so <laughs> you gotta try your hardest just to walk over. Like it, it was tough for me, bro. Like one seventy was not an easy cut. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'm glad you found a natural way. No, I'm, 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 yeah. I'm glad to be away from that shit, man. Absolutely. We want you to come in healthy and strong and have a great main event here. So with the uh, mission hey. wizardry that Salter has, you've already mentioned that he's legit at jits, but what about the chances of you catching him in something? Have you thought about that? Hey, man, you never know. <laughs> it's a fight. Anything can happen. <laughs> I'm working. Got my little brown belt. <laughs> But uh, I don't know. Who knows, man? If uh, the opportunity is there, I'm definitely going to jump on it. We haven't seen you do it since <laughs> King of the Cage, I don't think. It's been like eight years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a minute. It's been a minute, man. I got to get another one. <laughs> but then fans do love the knockouts. And I said this once, I'll say it again. You provide that excitement. Whatever weight you're fighting at when you get in the cage, people know that you can bring the thunder at any time. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. At 85, though, I can do it for a lot longer. <laughs> well, I think you proved that with the Psychic Auto because you went the full three rounds with him. Yeah, that was good. I needed a good three rounds. See how my body would hold up. See how I feel like the heavier weight. Yeah, so that was good. I liked it. Have fun. Would you say he's one of the best strikers you faced, or would you rank Andre Korshkov a little bit higher? Um, shit, I don't know, man. Uh, Cotto's out there doing doing his little doing his thing in kickboxing right now. So he has, I mean, he has a legit kickboxing background. So he's pretty up there, and he fought one of the best in the world, Joe Shield. Like he fought him twice and beat him. So like, so yeah, I mean, he's he's up there. <laughs> He is, definitely. But I also reference Korishkov because, unfortunately, you know, out of your last eight, nine fights, that's the only one that hasn't gone your way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, that was uh, that was part of me, like, having to understand I can't fight it that way, too. Like, that was a big part of it. But, um, Korishkov, he's a hell of a fighter. He used to be a champion for a reason. That's he true. came out there and he brought, a, he brought a good fight, brought a tough fight. So I didn't expect him to, to come with anything any less. So yeah, hats off to him. Do you think if you fought him at middleweight, one of the that... main reasons why? Oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah, no, no. I mean, yeah, like uh, what you were getting at. If I fought him at middleweight, would it be any different? And shit, who knows? He's one of the reasons why I moved up because I realized I can't fight people like that caliber, uh, depleting my body like that. So if I wanted to fight somebody at that high of a level, like I, I gotta be 100% myself. So who knows, who knows how I'll go at 185. I definitely would be down to do it. <laughs> so you're going to Thagerville for this fight here at Bellator 210. What's your thoughts about being in Oklahoma and, uh, a familiar fighting ground for you because you also fought Andre Fulu here. Yeah, uh, yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I like, I like being out there. It's real close to my, to Dallas, to my hometown, so all my people get to come out. I'm in the casino, I see all the, the Cowboys hats and all that stuff, the Dallas Cowboy hats, and I just feel like I'm at home, so <laughs> it's a, it's a dope place for me to fight it. Yeah, I noticed that last time I drove to Dallas, actually, I, I'd never been to Thagerville before, and I was heading south on I-35, and all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute, Windstar World Casino. I know that place. It's right <laughs> yeah. there on the border. <laughs> yeah. Yep, it's right there, bro. Right. <laughs> Growing up, we used to go there when we were younger, go gamble a little bit. So it's a real familiar place, man, it's like being back home. All right, well, that means you're going to have a great turnout, too. You're going to have all your family and friends that will come up and see the fight. 
Yeah, yeah, they gonna be there. <laughs> Excellent. So, speaking of who's gonna be there, who's gonna corner you for this one? Uh, this fight it should be Nick, uh, one King Nick, mm -hmm. and then my brother, my brother Anthony, and then Saxon Ginger. That sounds good. What is Anthony up to these days? Yeah. Uh, he's doing good, man. He he just fought for a one FC. He sounded like a. A fight deal with one FC. He fought Andy Sauer, like another legend. Uh, he beat him by the fight decision. Nice. Yeah, so he's doing good, man. Yeah, he's, he's doing real good, actually. He's, That's cool. His mindset's in a real positive place and shit like that. Like he's, he's like coming off a big win. He's in the gym a lot, teaching, training. And it seems like one fighting is making some big moves to, lately. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to like how how they how they treat him. Man. Everything turns out over there. Yeah, I'm sure Demetrius Johnson is looking forward to that as well. He probably feels like, shit, it's about time. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I think he fit in over there perfect, man. He does all that anime shit and the video games and stuff. I think, he, I think he'll fit in with that company. And they like the, the fighters his size, too. They give him a good spotlight as well. Yeah, yeah, they do. They really do. They do. Not before. But then Bellator, I like because they give all the fighters a spotlight from all the way down to the women's straw weights and feather weights to all the way up to heavyweights. So we got all this stuff going on. Do you think there needs yeah, to be do. like a middleweight yeah. tournament to go along with this welterweight and heavyweight tournament we got? Yeah, I was I was just talking about that to somebody. Uh, that'll be interesting. There's, there's a, a good amount of people at middleweight, like all really trying to get that to that top spot. Uh, I think if we put a little put a little light on that, it would bring out a lot a lot more people. Because uh, before I got to the middleweight division, I didn't really really know who was even in the division. Now that I'm here, like and I see all the people, I'm like shit. Like <laughs> this would be a nice little tournament. And of course, whoever wins that tournament, they would love to face Gegard Masasi. We keep talking about legends. That's another legend yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah, he's <laughs> right there with us, man. It's dope. Yeah, it'll be nice to fight him too, man. Yeah. All right. Well, 85 is bad, man. <laughs> yeah, it's one of my favorite divisions in Bellator right now, and you're bringing the thunder, like I said before. So we can't wait to see this fight with you and John Salter here at Bellator 210. But before I let you go, I want to get any plugs and sponsors and promotional links. Anything you want to mention? Uh, not much. Just check out Bang Athletics, apparel, and uh, both of them. <laughs> All right, Chidi, I appreciate the time today. Thank you so much, and have a great main event with John Salter at Bellator 210 in Thackerville. All right, take care, bro. Thanks. Thank you, and thank you, Dan, as well.